point where in professional services you actually do tend to meet a lot more people. You do tend to hey guys, if you haven't already checked out part one of this video, be sure to do so. I'll leave that in the description by and also in a card at the and top. Um, this video will make no sense to you if you just carry on watching this without watching part one, so be sure to do so. I'm so sorry it took a whole week for this video to come out, but your girl's out last week celebrating her 28th birthday. Woo -woo. If you wish me happy birthday on Instagram, thank you so much. If you're not following me on Instagram and Twitter, what are you doing, girl? Follow me, it's at Mira Speaks, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care, bye to my next point where in professional services you actually do tend to meet a lot more people and as i said in my previous video sometimes you have to you meet these people and you learn a thing or two that is invaluable to you personally and professionally um and that is one exposure that i definitely definitely uh, enjoyed one of the exposures that i definitely um would highly recommend for somebody who's looking to meet other people and build their network as well it's a great way to do that um professional service is a great place because you do bump into so many different people not to say they don't do that in-house and um, as i'll talk about in-house video but whereas in-house you tend to mainly focus on um that you tend to mainly focus on that company and its subsidiaries although some of them may be outsourced to other professional services firms funny enough and um, usually you deal with the people within those organizations and that's it but in professional service you should do get the exposure of dealing with somebody um outside of that company and that's where again i, I would say one well, negative side of that is actually time zone difference so i'm dealing with somebody in the us delaware let's say and um i need confirmation from them before i hit my deadline i send them an email at say 4 p.m no no i send them an email at a.m it's it's uh, 8 p.m. where they are. By the time I finish work, that's when they are getting to work. So that was that's where sometimes that issue also comes back. Being in the scrum secretary, you tend to have to manage all these things and organize and multitask and make sure that you know the right things are done at the right at the right time um, as well. Um, another thing about being in professional services is also the level of experience and knowledge that you can build up from other people within that company. Usually in professional services, it's it's the same as in-house in a way, but um, you do tend to have people who are a lot more, so it's like more hierarchical in a way. That is how I experienced it. Whereas when I started as a trainee, you, know, you have a trainee, you have a co-citizen, you have an assistant, you have a senior, you have all these things. So there are a lot, there's a lot of wealth of knowledge that you can learn from. And you also do get a lot more exposure to other co-citizens within other professional services firms. So for instance, um, it's actually funny how I was we were taking over a company and the person who was doing the transfer transferring those books over to me was somebody who was in my um, financial decision making class while I was studying so I was like even and even and I was like this name sounds familiar sounds familiar and I thought you know what you know, let me just let me just ask her like did you attend the financial decision making class she was like yeah that just changed the whole board I was like wow picked up the phone called her and the dynamic just changed from there and in as much as perhaps she would have treated anybody else the same when transferring over the document to me she made sure everything was in tip top condition make sure that I was like you know having the right books have taken over and um, probably pointed me in a direct like also made me aware of how this client is and you know it just helped me a little bit that was really really helpful um I don't think in profession in-house in I'm not sure how how corporate health checks work because I haven't experienced one but if you have please comment below um and also i haven't done a transfer out just yet or a transfer in because you know we haven't acquired anything or got rid of anything for me to say i'm transferring out any books or transferring in any books but um if you have experienced any of those things and you know it does happen in house as well hey comment below i'm sure it does but in professional services you are more exposed to those things because if a company is say wants to ipo for instance so it wants to um, list either here, US, or Japan, or wherever. Sometimes you are the, mostly you are the main point of contact actually to do those things. Um, one thing that I would say I didn't get a lot of in professional services, which somebody who is in, in another professional, professional services firms may get, but from my experience, I didn't get it, was governance. I feel like I did not get exposure to a lot of governance um, in terms of listing rules, takeover codes. So, as I was saying, when my battery died, um, for me personally, I didn't get as much experience into governance as I would have loved. 
That is my personal experience. And maybe somebody else who works in different professional services for males will have a completely different experience. But for me, I would have loved a lot more exposure into UK corporate governance code, takeover code, listing rules, um, a little bit more understanding. Um, I, I had a little bit of exposure to INS announcement and dealing with um, the PR, no, not the PR, the listing um, rules, the F FCA, um, but not as much as I would have loved to. And that is where I'm using being in-house actually um, top up that knowledge. But maybe perhaps if you do want to work for professional services from during your interview, is one good question to ask and just say, how much exposure would I have to governance um, and understanding a company in terms of would I have any listed companies on my books? Would I be able to um, liaise with the FCA? Are any of my entities regulated? Um, things like that might give you a little bit of understanding into that company. Um, and if you are battling against two professional services firms to go for and one of them offers you that, then you can always look at that. But for me personally, I didn't have that much exposure, and it's, I'm now using the time to understand those things. Have, and I would now work for a listed company, so I, I have no choice but to always make sure that I'm looking up all these principles and, and codes and things like that. So those are some. Of, those are the key things for me that I can um, recall. But having said that, I feel like professional services was definitely an great learning ground for me if you're starting out in a trainee role working in um a professional services firm is absolute great exposure there are so many of them i'm not going to list anyone here but um if you want to know if a company that you're going for an interview is a professional services firm feel free to email me i'm very familiar with a lot of these companies in the uk but it's great um breeding grants great learning great exposure and um, to different entities different people different walks of life you even get the opportunity sometimes to actually leave the office and go meet these people um I've had to do that. The times that I've had to go all the way to um, the Cotswolds, uh, which is really nice. Um, had opportunities to uh, meet people in and around London, having to meet people to grab co coffee and things just to make the experience better. Because sometimes people are, some of these people who have these companies are in the UK for a few days and we just want to catch up and just meet that person face to face. And because you don't work with them, um, sometimes having to meet these people is actually really, really good because you'll put a name to the face. Um, so having to, working with professional services, I wouldn't change it for anything um in a sense I know I didn't get the governance experience that I, I, I wanted but I recognized that and that's why I decided to make the decision to move in-house um but you may get in your professional services firm if I knew at the time I probably would have asked that question as well probably would have made a lot of difference into um the decisions that I would have made um but another thing also with professional services and this experience I also had was opportunity for secondment. So while I was in what the first professional services firm I was in, I actually was seconded to two listed companies. And um, so they get, again, that was great exposure. But during my secondment, I had exposure to governance, but not as much. Again, I didn't understand. I didn't know what this code means. And, you know, I, I was learning it because I did corporate governance, corporate governance, but I didn't really understand and know how to apply it into the situation that I'm dealing with. Um so that was that was where I would say I was just lacking I was just going about it really. But professional services, if you give me if you give me um send me an email to say hey this is company A, they want to transfer this, I know what to do. I'm like, okay cool, we gotta get the minutes, get a stock transfer from get a show let's do this. I had no all these things. When it comes to um what what, what decision is the director can take it into I'm just like oh Okay, now I know not only do you check the articles, you also check the board tours. Ooh, they have subsidiary governance principles, you've got to check those too. Ooh, what does the company exact say? And how can you like link on who has, you know, all these things? I'm just like, mate, I'm not learning all of it. I'm still a baby in the game, I always like to say, just nearly five years in the industry, not not long, but um, I've had the little exposure that I have, and hopefully I can help somebody who is coming up. And for you guys who are looking for trainee roles and who are in trainee roles and looking on building your um, exposure within that company i would always advise that you dilly dap into you dilly you tap into each sector if you can so do you have a professional services do you have in-house i would love to work in the charity sector as well i'd like to work for a non-profit public, public sector as well um just to have a little bit more broader knowledge of a little bit of everything um 
to do with Kosek because it's growing, it's still niche, but it's growing. And as I always say, we are the future of Kosek and we can make it what it is. But I just thought I'd just come on here and let you guys know about um, my experience about working in professional services and what I gained from it. I hope I've helped anybody out there. Please comment below, engage with me. Let me know that you guys like videos like this, like my experiences, and if I can share my experience for anybody who's coming up as well. I really, 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 really appreciate it. Um, thank you all so much for the love and I appreciate every single one of you who's reached out to me directly or comments on my videos and just make sure to know that I'm doing the right thing and I'm helping you guys and making decisions or perhaps paid in the way for you guys to make great decisions in your careers as company secretaries. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.